And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Darlene and I had a very good friend back in Mississippi, a co-worker of mine, who uh, was about our age, maybe a little older, uh, just a terrific guy, wonderful fella, big, had a huge laugh, was just so fun to be around. And because he never married and uh, never really had a girlfriend, we always took the time every Friday night to take him out to eat. It was date night, I guess you'd call it. And uh, we just so enjoyed those times together with him and had such uh, a good time. And I mentioned he was a big guy. Big is understating the word. He was really overweight. And that caused a lot of health problems for him. He was diabetic. Um, he uh, had heart problems. Had a couple stents put in. He may have had a heart attack or two. I don't remember. He also smoked way too much. And drank way too much Diet Coke. He almost seemed sometimes to exist on nothing but cigarettes and diet soda. And of course that would cause health problems and he would go to the doctor every so often to get looked at and examined with certain complaints and he'd, he'd say what was wrong and the doctor would tell him the same thing that you and I were telling. And that is lose weight, eat better, stop smoking, stop drinking the diet drinks. Every time we went out to eat, you know, Darlene and I would at least attempt to eat healthy with a salad or something. He got the greasiest hamburger and fries. He was just not taking care of himself. And every time he'd go in and the doctor would tell him this, and for whatever reason, he wouldn't or couldn't do it. And sadly, the story kind of ended the way so many of them do, kind of the way you figured it would end. He uh, woke up one day coughing blood, and this time there was nothing the doctor could tell him that would help. And six weeks later, he was gone, and I miss him terribly to this day. His situation reminds me a lot of what we see in our readings this morning. Let's start with the Old Testament first from Psalm 119. Verse 9, how can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. We get in that same situation with God sometimes that my friend did. We go to God and tell him our problems and ask him how to fix them. And then God tells us. Right? That's what it says here in the psalm. How can a young person, or any person really, stay on the path of purity? That's, we're in a sense going to the doctor and asking him. And God tells us by living according to his word. And then the rest of that psalm is in a sense his prescription for us. Do not let me stray from your commands. Teach me your decrees. I rejoice in following your statutes. I will not neglect your word. And yet, then we get to our reading in John and we have the problem, don't we? Jesus is talking here. And he's talking about our spiritual lives and our spiritual condition. And he says, anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. And here's the key verse, verse 26. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. Do you remember in Lent we've talked about picking up our cross and following Jesus? Jesus said, pick up your cross and follow me. Well, today he goes a little further. What's it mean to follow him? Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, my servant will also be. So here Jesus is giving us the prescription again. If you want to follow me, if you want to be a Christian, you must be a servant. You must serve. 
So many of us, and I, and I put myself in this as well, go to God and say, God, tell me what you want us to do. Tell me what you want me to do. What am I supposed to do with my life? Show me the way. Show me the path. Well, God has shown us the way. He has told us. We don't necessarily need a burning bush. We have it right here in the Bible. It's all in the book. God has told us what to do. But sadly, too many of us, upon going to the doctor and hearing what we need to do, don't want to take the advice. We don't want it. It's too hard. Just like my friend. For whatever reason, couldn't the doctor told him what to do? He couldn't do it. Well, here God's telling us what to do. And sadly, too many of us don't want to do it. If you want to be a follower of mine, if you want to be a Christian, you must be a servant. And sadly, upon hearing that, a lot of people will turn away and stop following. Go back a few more chapters in John to John chapter 6. This is the chapter where Jesus talks about himself as the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes and partakes of that will never be hungry again. And that just blows the mind of a lot of people. And if you go to John 60, or excuse me, John 6, verse 60, upon hearing this, the Bible tells us, many of his disciples said, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? And then from verse 66, from this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. Many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. That's the problem we've got today. We ask God, we plead with God, just like in Psalm 119, tell us what to do, teach us, show us, we'll do it. And then God comes out and tells us, Jesus comes out and tells us, and we say, no, thank you. That's really not what I had in mind. And that's why a lot of people turn back. In our gospel lesson this morning, Jesus is saying, if you want to be a follower of mine, if you want to be a Christian, you must be a servant. You must serve. You must go out. You must get out of the pews and go out into the world in the dark places and take the gospel and shine your light. You must go out and reach the people who are enemies of the cross, who don't like you, who aren't lovable, who aren't very nice sometimes, and who don't particularly want to hear our message. And we must go out and we must reach them. You must be a servant. A servant if you want to follow. Serving in that self-sacrificial agape love that Jesus modeled for us. And upon hearing this, many people will say, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? And many of his disciples will turn away. Because a lot of people are willing to follow Jesus up to a point. All right, Jesus, if you want me to come to church, I can do that. If you want to give me some money, if you want me to give some money, I can do that. But now you're asking me to do this? To go out, to serve, to work, to give up my time? This is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? We live in a time of political upheaval and turmoil. It's not that much different than it was in the 1960s. As a matter of fact, the 60s were probably even much more difficult and tumultuous. There was always somebody during that time protesting against something. 
And back during that time, a very popular saying came about that said, question authority. It was put on shirts and billboards and written on sidewalks, question authority. The idea being, we can't trust anyone in authority. We can't trust anyone of a certain age. We can't trust our politicians. We can't trust people in the military. We can't trust police officers. We can't trust teachers in schools. So we're going to question authority. And we're going to tell them that we're not going to take everything that they're telling us at face value anymore. But sometime later, it's kind of interesting. Sometime later, that statement was amended a little bit. Question authority. And then someone underneath added, what happens if authority answers? What happens if authority answers? Question authority. What happens if authority answers? In other words, the authority is answering. We're asking questions of God. What do we do? What do I do with my life? What's my purpose? What do you want me to do? Why am I here? How can I, how can I best do what you want me to do, Lord? Well, authority has answered and told us. And it's all in his word. We don't need a burning bush. We don't need the seas to part or water to turn into wine. We've got the word of the living God telling us what to do. Authority has answered. And what authority has said here in this case is... Whoever serves me must follow me, and wherever I am, my servant will also be. Authority's answered. Authority has told you what to do. The only question now is, are you going to follow? This is a hard saying. Who can accept it? Our prayer is, all of us can. Amen.